Hi guys, hope everybody's okay this week. On this video, I just wanted to give you an insight into our local Pipistrelle bat population, some of whom are guests in our house. Good morning everybody. Well, it's the 29th of July. It's beautiful. A little bit of three sorts of uh, moisture in the air and it's only 11 degrees so it's the first time for quite a while that we are experiencing a little bit of little less than that 14 degrees and 16 degrees hot nights that we were having so let's see what we can find this morning It's really apparent the stillness and quiet that we find now in these woodlands and glades. Three months ago this was a full of bird song where um, the breeding season was well underway but very quiet now, very quiet. I'm out a little bit too late to uh, catch the badgers up, still up uh, today. I think it's about seven ish, seven o'clock, and they uh, we're looking at half past four, five o'clock to see in spot and get some photographs of uh, of the badgers at their set. Good evidence of them being around the last few hours. A couple of photographs of the uh, the tracks I'll put up. So what appears to be a, a very young muntjac track. I put a photograph of a one that I saw at this particular set a few weeks back, uh, a young one, plus uh, I saw an adult too, but didn't get a photograph of, of, of that one. But the, but the young one was, uh, was really beautiful, so I'll put that up in a second. Um, bad news that I have to report uh, we're following two swan pairs over the last six seven months um, right through from courtship to uh, to breeding to, to uh, nest building and to the cygnets hatching and the 
the pair on this reserve I'm on now had three signets. They were uh, going to fail, the nest had failed, but three signets was fantastic. The other reserve, the first reserve, the swans had two signets. Lots of predation around there. Well, I went up there two or three days ago, and there's now only one. And uh, I can't believe that because they're quite big. So unless uh, unless it had drifted away from the parents for a few minutes. But it didn't look like it. It looked like there was, only, there was only one there. So I will go back there next week and see if I can find that second signet. But there is so much predation around here. Uh, you can check out my swan video. I'll put a link up where I've basically uh, followed these swans for the last uh, six, seven, eight months. Uh, I'll put that link up now. Right, I'm now to try and get through this path which you'll see is becoming impassable after the rain Sorry, sorry Mr. Slayer, I'm going to have to just try and get through here without getting all my, all my camera wet. Whoa, this is the worst it's been. <laughs> Madness. Just going to talk quietly because it's uh, really, really peaceful here today. Um, but I just wanted to say that uh, how great it is to uh, to be part of the YouTube community because you can you can chat online virtually with people from all over all over our, our wonderful globe and. Uh, just recently, uh, we've got we've got some some followers, subscribers from uh, from Oregon, Nova Scotia, Washington State, Austria, Scotland, and obviously all the all my friends locally who are into the same things as uh, as we all are. But uh, this is the reason. And I like getting up early and I think I suspect most of you guys do as well. So I've moved out of the woodland and uh, the lakes area into uh, this area which is a uh, and sort of natural marshland really um, got a couple of pictures this week of uh, reed warbler feeding young um, and just up here was a fantastic sighting of um, over a hundred sand martins adults and young that were obviously enjoying the, the windy warm conditions feeding on the wing absolutely loads of them got some some quite good photographs which i'll put up um but can't see any of them today uh they're just not not around
So every single day is different. Different wildlife experiences, different things to see. Like I said earlier, today is really quiet. The wildlife is uh, stocking up for the winter or for their migrations. Some of course are already gone, no cuckoos now. So it's a, it's a change, you know, it almost feels like, I know it's only the end of July, first day in August today, but almost feels like a changing in the seasons. Breeding season's gone. Now it's just, let's stock up for, for the coming autumn and uh, winter. See, despite the weather, someone's still singing. So over the last 15 years, we've had uh, lodgers in our house. Pipistrelle bats which roost in our loft and under our eaves and on our roof. Sometimes they make a mistake on re-entry and they end up inside the house. And this is what happened last week. This little Pipistrelle bat ended up in our bathroom and decided the best place to hide would be inside one of the toilet rolls. I'll be honest, it was a bit of a shock for the other occupant of the house whilst uh, visiting the loo in the middle of the night. So what I'll do is I'll catch the bat in a perspex container on a piece of cardboard and take it outside. Sometimes the bats will have been in the house for quite a while, so they'll be hungry and thirsty. The first thing to do is to make sure that it gets a good drink of water once it's had the drink, make sure it uh, has, has an available food source and is kept warm and dry. With this one, made sure it was underneath our little roof of our Kimonera so it'd be safe, warm and dry. They are so cute. Within an hour and a half, this little guy had perked up and flew off to join the rest of the roost. Okay guys, that's it for this week. Thanks very much for joining me. Just starting to drizzle rain, so I'll probably head back and put all the, uh, the equipment away because it's gonna get wet. But another beautiful walk and another beautiful week. So uh, stay safe, make sure you do. And uh, thanks for the subscriptions, everyone. Absolutely fantastic. I will hopefully see you next week. Cheers everyone.